We're standing in the West Sims unit, which was burned during the fall 2015 Klamath River Prescribed Fire Training Exchange. Um, it's a multi landowner uh, burn unit that spans uh, Karuk tribal land onto a, a local private timber owner. Well, in this particular location, we have a conifer encroached uh, white oak, black oak woodland. Um, what that ha obviously had a very a very large madrone uh, component. The whole paradigm for forest management over the past 20 plus years has been we know that fire is a problem but we need to get in and manually and mechanically treat it before we can let fire burn through those landscapes. And what we're seeing in the last couple decades is that fire is coming back to those landscapes well before we have any chance to do the scale of manual mechanical treatments that we're thinking of. And managers of today don't have a lot of examples of seeing prescribed fire as a primary treatment in these areas where it's been excluded for a hundred years. Part of the example set here is that we can utilize features like ridges, roads, and uh, historic trails to compartmentalize burn units that we can use, that we could treat around the edges and implement prescribed fire as our initial treatment in the interior. There was a Trex burn here above the road um, in 2012, and then the, wild, the wildfire started in Orleans in 2013 that burned right up adjacent to this unit. We effectively had a, a recent fire in front of where that fire was going, but we didn't have enough burnt yet to effectively stop it. If the fire would have came through here in the same conditions as it did just downhill from us in 2013, there probably wouldn't be very much standing here alive today. But we were able to come in and put fire in our own terms. We treated close to 70 acres um, of, of land with prescribed fire as a primary treatment. Um, we had minimal investment in uh, uh, manual fuels treatment along the perimeter of the unit, but it really demonstrated that we could hold these fires with minimal fuels treatment around the outside and then implementing uh, prescribed burns at, at the right time of year, you know, late in the fall. Um, when we're past the worst part of fire season uh, in a controlled manner to be able to reduce the incredible fuel loading that was here when we started. As before, it was, it was thick in here. There, there were places, there were 10 acre chunks of ground that you couldn't even get through without a machete. So at this point, you know, you can see and you walk through and you can smell the tea that's growing in here and you can see the little bulbs that are important traditional food sources. There are a lot of tribal folks that want to preserve our ability to continue the practices uh, that, that proliferate these species and to revitalize our ability to utilize them in a manner to where we don't feel threatened by arrest or persecution. Most people consider humans as separate from the ecosystem, whereas indigenous knowledge says that humans are a, a critical component of it. A good opportunity exists here at the West Sims Unit, which we've been taking advantage of, is to get these specialists out on the ground to see what fire looks like as an initial treatment um, and, and to see that transformation over time uh, to, to improve wildlife habitats and fisheries habitat. So what the Western Klamath Restoration Partnership is doing is we're planning a small demonstration of about 6,000 acres um, where we can do treatments like this. This unit is around 60 acres and so we're really looking at ramping up the scale and complexity of our actions. The important part is, is we're building capacity so we can handle the fire issue on our own in the future. This is the start of, of building that capacity so we can achieve the larger scale vision together.